coming up in this week's video. Well, we spent half the night over on that mooring over there, but around about one o'clock this morning, we had to move over to here. Roasting. We did start out a bit. Good morning. Morning. Welcome to our vlog. You join us on a... Well, today it's really windy and it keeps raining again. Oh, the weather has no, been so bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the goodness me. The weather's just been awful, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, hence, we're filming indoors today because yeah. the wind is just so relentless. Yeah. And uh, the rain just keeps coming on and off. Yeah, because that's not what you came here for <laughs> is the weather, is it, really? <laughs> um, yeah. We've been cruising on the River Neans. So we were very lucky to be able to cruise it in September of uh, yeah. 2023, yeah, weren't yeah. we? If you're interested in cruising that area, these are the books that we've, we've used. These are the Inland Waterways Guides. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and you can get them from the Imre website, which I've, I've put a link in the description below. I want to thank a couple of people this oh, week. Just Shirley for, this week for buying Shirley us a coffee. Shirley for buying us a coffee. So should we get on with it? We'll get on with it. So uh, yeah, enjoy this video and uh, we'll speak to you um, next time. Yeah. Bye. So bye, for, bye now. for now. We leave the Pudding Lane moorings at Alwalton Lock and we soon approach Watermill Lock where there has been a mill here since 1791. It's now a Grade 2 listed building which is, has been converted into residential accommodation in 1986. We pass Wandsford Station, the headquarters of the Neen Valley Railway and Stibbington Boatyard. Watch out for the lovely Wandsford Arched Bridge with a total of 12 arches and has been a crossing over the River Neen since Saxon times. The current bridge is from about 1600 and is listed as an ancient monument. After ascending Wandsford, Yarwell and Elton Locks, we moored on the permissive moorings next to Elton Mill. We spent half the night over on that mooring over there, but around about one o'clock this morning, we had to move over to here because last uh, yesterday evening, well, from about 5 till 7.30, all on this lock landing here. Morning. It was about 30 kids, ranging from about 14 to 16, all um, using the lock as a swimming pool and jumping from halfway up the guillotine. They left a considerable amount of rubbish here this morning, which is that I've just cleared up. And, uh, but they were gone by um, 7.30 last night. There was no abuse, no shouting, just them enjoying themselves. Dangerously, I think. But what could we say? The other thing is they left the paddles open on the gates. So the water levels went down by a good eight inches and we were grounded. So we had to move over. Anyway, Pat's waiting to get off. So uh, I best get on board. The water levels are well down. There's an iron grid underneath the, which was underneath the water last night. That was completely exposed. Um, we had to move across and close the paddles on the lock gates. coming up to, uh, to uh, the first lock of the day and there's a lovely mill beside it and uh, there's that weed boat that we passed moored up on the lock landing hopefully there's enough room in front for us to get in but the uh, gates are open anyway but Pat just needs to drop me off we just spent the last 10 minutes trying to get this cabinet open to work the lock. The key was sticking in the lock and wouldn't go in far enough. I tried for about five minutes and then Pat had to get up and, and he's had a go and managed to do it. But it was sticking in the lock, so that's 10 minutes trying to do that. He's back on board now and uh, I'm going to operate the lock. This 
this is lovely. This is a Walter Newton lock. Um, and as I said, you can see the mill as we're on our approach. It's a lovely uh, cottage and church on this side of the lock. It's very pretty. There's a few tricky bits like this on the on the Neen, where there's been trees down blocking some of the navigation and then trees the other side that are encroaching on the navigation as well and you have to kind of weave your way through it and then it just opens up and it's beautiful. sure whether you can see that but there's one two three four five paragliders in the sky up there we're just coming to a tree to block the view that's Wandsford station there are moorings there just under the bridge they're quite noisy there are two boats there already so not that we'd not that we'd um, anticipated mooring up there, but um, yeah, very limited mooring. You're supposed to be able to moor on the other side of the bank, but mm, not sure where. It's all a bit reedy. That's a nice Dutch barge, and we're coming up to Stibbington Boatyard. quite pretty here. Um, willow there. And I think that's an old bridge there. It looks very nice with them the arches. Here we go, we're just approaching our second lock of the day and that's Wandsford Lock. So I've just cracked the paddle open, not a great deal. And uh, cracked the side that we, uh, the, the boat was on, which is supposed to hold the boat against the lock wall, but it doesn't seem to, we've still drifted across. Um, we're at, that's only holding on the centre line. Maybe we ought to change our way of doing things and uh, do a bow and stern line instead. I don't know what other people do. Um, 
but literally I've just cracked the paddle open there's hardly any water coming in so there's, it looks like there's some contractors here doing some surveying work on this lot and there we are just drifting back again with these um, wider locks, I only work one side of the lock so that if there's a problem, I can easily close the paddles. I've done that more or less right from the beginning on the wide locks. And there's some lovely open views from this lock. Beautiful. We'll soon be approaching Yarwell Lock and the lock is situated by Yarwell Mill which is a huge caravan park. They have some boat moorings as well as you can see. And there's caravans as far as the eye can see chalets in the background. So this is Yarwell Mill. I think you can get, looks like there's a cafe area there or certainly a seating area. I've literally cracked that paddle open, very small amount, still lots of water going in though. And Pat hanging onto the rope there. So this is our third lock today, one more to go. Filled up with water here. So there's a water point on the um, on the lock landing there. So we've uh, filled up with water, which was nice. Don't really like passing a water point. How are we doing, honey? Huh? Oh, uh, you thirsty? I'm all. Yeah. It's one of the hottest days of the year, isn't it? In September. Roasting. We did start out a bit earlier so that we wasn't cruising through the real hot afternoon but we've still got about an hour to go in this hot sunshine we're hoping for some tr shade in the trees aren't we well we were lucky coming up to a certain degree because we did have shade but i'm gonna have to get the umbrella out but it's there right in front of me That's Elton Mill. It's, a, it's an old mill that's a run down. And we are just going to turn into the lock here. And there's the lock. There was somebody waiting on the lock landing ready to come in, and we were mooring the other side of the lock anyway. So uh, Pat's gone round to moor up, and uh, I've walked round. 
that's the pathway to the village there and uh, this is the derelict old mill well we're all moored up and these have decided to pass by um, hope they don't come too close they don't look as if they are at the moment because we don't really want an episode a repeat episode of when the cow came through our window while we were when we were moored up um, on the river weaver but it's a, a not too shabby mooring the lock is over there that we came through earlier and uh, I don't know whether you can see that but the water is pretty clear 